This is a Spanish class, so it wouldn't hurt you to think about where Spanish came from and why we're teaching it in the United States. I'll have a lot of students sometimes that say we should all just speak English because we're in the United States and everyone in the United States should speak English. And that's an understandable thought um, because English is the most popular language in the United States right now. Most people do speak English in the United States, so it would make sense if we all just speak English. Um, but I want you to think larger than that and look outside of just the United States for a second. If we're talking about our side of the world, we should all be speaking Spanish because there's more people on our side of the world that speak Spanish than English. So by that argument, just because there's more people in the United States that speak English than Spanish, we should all be speaking English. If you look wider than just the United States, this means we should all be speaking Spanish. And if you look at the whole entire world, we should all be speaking Chinese, really, because there are more people in the world speaking Chinese than any other language. So that argument would mean that we should be learning Chinese in school, but we are not. We're learning Spanish. And Spanish is a foreign language. Foreign language is just like learning any skill. It's like teaching you how to cook or how to weld or how to make something out of wood or how to paint how to sing. It's a skill like anything else and that's why we're teaching it in school. It has nothing to do with trying to convert you to be Spanish or anything like that. Foreign language is just a skill. We offer other classes that teach you other skills. Learning a foreign language is a skill just like anything else. Um, we are close to countries that speak Spanish. So we could be teaching you Russian, we could be teaching you Chinese. Some schools that are larger do offer other languages other than Spanish. We are a small school, so we only offer one foreign language for you to learn, and we chose to teach you Spanish because in the United States we are in close proximity to Spanish-speaking countries. And there are some residents of the United States that are more familiar with Spanish than any other language. Um, Definitely down south, and I'm sure you, you can think of examples of people in different communities that have Spanish as their first language in the United States. Because it is, we are close to Spanish-speaking countries. There are a lot of residents in the United States that are familiar with Spanish. So that's sort of why we're offering Spanish as our foreign language. But here's a really interesting thought. How did Spanish get to our side of the world? We all know that we speak English in the United States, the pilgrims came over, we were conquered by the British, and all that lovely stuff. But where did Spanish come from? Why is it here? Why, why are we having to um, have so much Spanish influence in the United States? Uh, it's pretty much this guy's fault, if you know who he is. And we'll kind of explain that in just a second. This is what Europe looked like around 1450. And remember, at this time, our half of the world did not exist. This is a time when people thought the world was flat and everything like that. Europe during this time was split into all these different kingdoms that are kind of outlined here in different colors. Each little kingdom had their own rulers. Um, a lot of times they had their own governments, religions, and a lot of them had their own separate languages. So we have, you can see up by England would be where they spoke English. Down here is the country of Spain. Um, it's kind of outlined there by yellow. And those kingdoms would be speaking Spanish. Um, the main little kingdom at the time was the Holy Roman Empire, but at this time in 1450, the Romans are starting to sort of lose power to all these other little kingdoms. So why most people spoke Latin, which was the language of the Holy Roman Empire, um, Latin was kind of going out and all these other little languages were popping up. All of a sudden there was French, all of a sudden there's Italian, all of a sudden there's German, and all these other little languages. So there you can see the development of all these little languages um, that were happening in Europe. Another major thing that was happening in Europe at the time was trading with India. India um, led to uh, trading with China, so if you were able to get your goods and services over to India and China, you could make more money for your kingdom. So all of these little kingdoms over in Europe wanted to get to India fast and easy so that they could trade their stuff make a lot more money, and with the more money they could get 
um, more power, basically. Um, all the kingdoms in Europe wanted strength and power and money and control. And getting to India was one way to do that. The main way people got there, it was pictured here on the rope, they went uh, to the west. Nope, they went to the east. Sorry, <laughs> wrong direction. There was one guy, though, that thought, you know what? A faster way to India might be if we went to the west, though. So instead of tracking east, um, as you can see in the map, Christopher Columbus had an idea about going west to get to India. So what he did in, in Christopher Columbus, is the guy pictured here, he was a Portuguese man. He was born in Portugal. So in 1485, he went to the king of Portugal and he gave him his great idea. Listen, king, um, I think that we should take a route to get to India, but we should head west. And that proposal was rejected. The king said, no, you're basically crazy. He tried again another presentation in 1488 and again was turned down. Um, I don't think this presentation was any different than the one he did three years ago. Maybe he just he said he needed less ships or less money because basically what Christopher Columbus was asking for was money and ships like for the king to please give him money and ships to put together a crew to go try to find a different way to India. And the king said no. So Christopher Columbus tried to set up little meetings with Italy. He tried to set up a meeting with England's king um, to try to do the same proposal. And he couldn't even get a meeting with these guys. Nobody would see him. Pretty much at this time, everyone thinks Christopher Columbus is this crazy lunatic who thinks that you can go west to get to India. And he was getting rejected pretty much all over Europe. In 1489, he made a presentation to the Queen of Aragon, which is currently Spain. Um, and she, again, thought he was crazy, but she gave him a year salary to keep working on a plan. And during that year, he wasn't really allowed or he didn't have to go out and try to make any other presentations to any other king or queens. So basically, she just gave him money to not talk to other people about it. It's sort of like if you have a baseball player on your team that you know isn't very good and you know you're not going to play him, but you don't really want him to play for anybody else. You just give him some money. He'll sit on the bench for a year, and you don't have to worry about it. So this is sort of like Christopher Columbus just getting benched. He got a paycheck. He got to keep working on his plan. She really didn't think he was going to come up with anything or it was going to be worth anything. She just didn't want him to talk to anybody else. Now, Spain was actually pretty powerful at this point. There were two kingdoms called Castile and Aragon, and they, when they merged because um, Ferdinand of Aragon married Isabella of Castile, when those two got married, they formed what is now Spain, and it was like a super kingdom. It was two really strong, really rich kingdoms coming together, and they gained a lot of power. Both of these kingdoms spoke Spanish, so there was, they had a lot in common, and they were both in the same area. So uh, Spain, at this time, was pretty powerful. They had a lot of money, um, and although they thought Columbus was pretty crazy, um, the queen decided just to pay him just in case, since they had the extra money kind of laying around. So in January 1492, the Spanish king and queen said that they would agree to let Christopher Columbus sail west hoping to find new land or a new route to India. Because if he was crazy enough to be correct and there was a new route to India, that would be great for them. They would get a lot more money and it would make Spain even more powerful. And maybe if he wasn't successful there, he could at least find new land, new islands maybe they thought, um, that could help Spain grow. So they agreed to pay him and give him some ships to sail west. So this is his first voyage and you uh, might know the story of Columbus sailing the ocean blue with his ships. Um, this is where he ended up on his first voyage. You can see he's sort of darting around the Caribbean, lands on some countries that are now Spanish-speaking countries um, like Cuba. Hispaniola um, is actually where Haiti and the Dominican Republic are. Uh, down below. So this is where Columbus starts bouncing around. Obviously it is not India, but he did find some significant land. He sends back word that we have new land in the Caribbean islands. 
and the Spanish kingdom begins to send out conquistadors to officially set up colonies. So Columbus's job is just to discover the land. He sends word back, and then the Spanish government, the king and the queen, send out um, kind of like soldiers or government people to set up new colonies of, of people in the new world. And Columbus just continues to be an explorer. He takes other voyages, finds other little areas. Here you can see he found Puerto Rico, and he starts darting down the Caribbean islands. And then eventually on his third voyage, he goes all the way down south and lands in South America. So he continues to be a explorer, send word back, and Spain starts sending over boatloads of conquistadors to take this land. When word gets out, that there is land available west, all these islands, this huge continent of South America. They haven't really even stumbled upon North America yet, but all of the little kingdoms, which you can see here is kind of what the kingdoms look like at this time, all of the kingdoms decide it would be a great idea to start sending ships west to try to conquer land. So here they come. <laughs> so I'm going to attempt to draw this out. We'll see how this works. The Spanish, obviously with Christopher Columbus, came first. And when they came over, because of Christopher Columbus, they landed in a lot of these Caribbean islands. Some of these. Um, and as you saw from the map, he also bounced down to South America. And they started conquering this land. Kind of all throughout here and all the way down. Um, they spread up through this way, got into what is now Mexico, and actually a good chunk of North America they eventually got. It's a lovely drawing, I know. The next people to kind of get in the game were the English. They mostly, because they were they're further up in Europe, they kind of came straight across and landed in this part of North America, which are known as our 13 colonies. So that's sort of where they set up shop. I should have colored Florida red because uh, Florida was also part of uh, the Spanish Empire before the 13 colonies. But uh, the English got here. They also, every once in a while, bop down here, found an island or two out here in the Caribbean that hadn't been found, but mostly that's where the English went. The French were next. Um, the French were also pretty much just interested in going straight across. So they landed in these northern areas, which is now Canada. And they also came down a little bit into here. They really didn't do too much in South America or the Caribbean. The Portuguese kind of just, it's a tiny little country, but they followed Spain's um, path, went down south, and they sort of got lucky in the fact that they took this whole little chunk of land here in South America. Today this is Brazil, um, but it was originally conquered by the Portuguese. They were the ones that got to this chunk of land first. So that's why the Portuguese um, got this whole little chunk. They were there first. And then, it, it would to be fair, the Russians did come from the other side. Let's do it brown. We'll, just do, we'll do black. The Russians came down kind of from Alaska got this part here, little chunk there. So these were all of the different um, kingdoms represented by the different languages that came over to our side of the world. Here's another way to look at the colonization of the Americas, the different people that came over and claimed the territory. It's a little bit nicer coloring than I had, um, but you can see the Spanish all there in green is where they conquered. The Portuguese got that chunk, which is now Brazil. Um, the French actually got a lot of the Midwest. 
The British, which are the English, only got the red part there, so they did get part of Canada too, but in the United States they just got that little sliver. And the reason that's interesting is because this directly translates into the languages uh, that are spoken in these areas now. Now from Columbus's time to um, I guess before the Civil War we had a lot of different wars in North America to um, fight over land. The Mexican-American War, the French-Indian Wars, um, obviously the Revolutionary War, um, and they did the same thing down in South America. So some of these territories have changed over time. For example, the Russians uh, don't really have too much of a stake in Alaska anymore. But um, because of wars and different things, what should I say? This is sort of our language map of our hemisphere. Um, and you can kind of see the British obviously spread out. The United States gained a lot more territory from the French and the Spanish through different wars and things like that. But you can kind of see the similarity between who conquered what and what language is spoken in those areas. The Portuguese get this chunk today which is known as Brazil, Spain gets this part of South America, this part of South America. Some of the stuff that's uh, shaded there, though, you can see here these are different tribes, different Native American, Native tribes, and not all Native Americans, but Native tribes, or it's a mixture, like Canada's a mixture of French and English that is spoken there. So our big question, how did Spanish get to our side of the world? Why do we speak English where we speak English? Why do they speak French where they speak French on our half of the world? It all has to do with explorers and conquistadors and where they ended up landing, where they ended up settling, and where they ended up conquering. So basically, it's all because of Christopher Columbus.